so uh, I will be uh, uh, talking to you about the uh, work we've done with modeling the chemical defensome network uh, using uh, two fish species and humans. So uh, the work I'm presenting here today is uh, part of a bigger digital life funded project. So let me first introduce you to Decode One. Um, in DECOD, environmental toxicologists, such as myself, work together with biologists, uh, computer scientists and mathematicians to decode the system toxicology of Atlantic Cod. And as a base for our work, we strive to incorporate RRI through public outreach, societal responsibility and, maybe most prominent for in our case, uh, to share our knowledge between the different traditional disciplines. So the reason for focusing on our efforts on COD are many. Uh, it is widely distributed in the North Atlantic Ocean, important in fisheries and a common uh, indicator species. And also in 2011, the uh, COD genome was first uh, uh, sequenced and published. So the project aims to understand the COD's reaction and adaption to environmental stresses. So we use either wild COD cod. Uh, uh, we expose cod uh, in cages experiments or in the lab, or we use isolated liver tissues or isolated proteins. The effects are then measured at the gene or protein level, um, uh, but also physiological and behavioral parameters. And you can learn uh, more about what we do in the different posters that we have here today, so I recommend to take a look. Um, and the final goal of the project is to develop uh, um, biomarker technology and systemic models to further aid uh, environmental monitoring and risk assessment. So where do the chemical defensome come into this? Um, when chemicals enter um, uh, the cod or any other organism, uh, the genes and proteins that are involved in detoxifying or metabolizing the compounds, as well as protecting the cells, are part of uh, what we call the chemical defensome. So in short, this includes uh, stress-activated uh, receptors or transcription factors that then can regulate uh, the expression of the rest of these genes. Um, and the compounds are metabolized uh, by phase one and phase two enzymes, and then transported out of the cell again by phase three uh, transporters. We also have the antioxidant and metal and heat responsive genes that uh, protect the cell components and um, keep homostasis in the cell. So what we have done in this project is to um, identify all the genes related to the chemical defensome in cod, zebrafish and human, uh, and then group them um, uh, in uh, uh, regarding to their function and family. And the resulting gene list consists of uh, 1,272 genes. If you look closer in the genes that are uh, expressed only in COD, um, we see that uh, it's reduced by half to 605, uh, where the non-present genes are marked in grey. Here we have also included the interactions, proteins interactions of different kinds, uh, being transcriptional regulation, uh, partners, uh, etc., from string. And then using cytoscape, uh, as many here previously had done, uh, we can then map uh, and visualize the whole uh, species specific uh, defensome. Uh, so, how can we use it? Uh, if you take a closer look at the nuclear receptors that uh, our group uh, has been working on for uh, quite some time. Um, here is a close-up of the nuclear receptors that are annotated in each of the genomes, so cod, zebrafish and human. And uh, I want to draw your attention to a gene called NR1I2 or uh, PXR, pregnane X receptor. And as you see, this gene is present in zebrafish and human. But in COD, uh, it is missing. Um, and we now have a, and yeah, so this is a very important uh, transcription factor in the chemical defensome, and it, as we will see in the next slide, uh, regulates many other genes. Uh, 
so we now have a, a manuscript in review where we have uh, described the evolutionary loss of uh, PXR. And we show that it's not only lost in uh, COD, uh, which is here, but also that there's been three independent losses within the Gadiform order. Um, so here uh, is the interesting with this network, uh, is that we can here mark the genes that are shown in yellow, are the ones that have some kind of interactions with uh, the PXR in zebrafish in human. Um, and as, you, as I said before, it, uh, uh, it then are, are <laughs> interaction <laughs> of some sort with many of the genes, all the phases of biotransformation, as well as some heat responsive genes. So to continue our in investigation with the missing PXR, uh, we now want to use this network to highlight any suspected uh, pathways that might have evolved to compensate for the loss of PXR in COD. So in zebrafish, for example, we know that uh, AHR is very important for uh, the full transcriptional response of a PXR target gene called CYP3A. Uh, and uh, when we look at, at the interactions here, we see a higher degree in general uh, between the nuclear receptor family and the basic helix loop helix, which the uh, AHR or real hydrocarbon receptor is part of. This is not so uh, dominating in the human. Um, another thing I want to draw your attention to is the interaction between the different phases of biotransformation. So the phase one, oxygenases and reductases, um, and the phase two, transferases. So this is the, uh, where the interactions dominate in cod and human. But when we look at zebrafish, uh, we see that the interactions uh, dominate instead between phase one and then transporters. So this will be interesting to investigate further by uh, more stringently uh, choosing what interactions to include, etc. And finally, we hope <laughs> that maybe this firework of genes can catch the interest and understanding from people also outside our own field. And our future plans is now to repeat the searches using the new COD annotation, which is uh, right around the corner, uh, to make a 3D model of it, and then to make it publicly accessible and usable for everybody. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Marta, for a um, good and interesting presentation. And I think that we have time for comments or questions uh, from the audience. We still have some, we managed very well in time for the coffee break Half a, sec here. Half yeah. a minute to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, that's good. They are all I, so ready for coffee. No, you have a question. No, I was just wondering if you can speculate why you, as you told us, there were three independent losses of the PXR. Yes. Why do you think this has happened independently three, three times? Yeah. Can you speculate? Uh, I mean, uh, there's very no good. <laughs> <laughs> good question. I have to say, he is also co-author of this uh, paper. <laughs> so, so I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you have a. No, you <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm not sure, um, and also, uh, yeah, I'm not um, I'm kind of new to also the uh, evolutionary side of uh, uh, of uh, this kind of uh, studies, but uh, yeah, no, it's interesting, and also it's important to mention not only in the Gadform order, but there's also been repeated losses throughout. Uh, fish evolution or tail host evolution so yeah yeah gene losses occur yeah they do okay uh, i think that we are um, almost there um, here is a small gift for you Ooh, and thank, thank you, you. <laughs> and um,